Hello, and welcome to another tip of the week from Free Revit Training, also known as Cantech Seminars. In this tip, we'll create in place components in Revit. I'll be doing this in AutoCAD 2009, but it also works in earlier versions and in later versions like 2010. What we're going to do is go to uh, Revit here, and we're going to look at the situation we have. In this scenario, we have this ramp. We'd like this wall to stay on the bottom here, so it stays on the ground level. And we'd like it to actually go up at an angle, stay in 42 inches above the, let's say, the uh, the ramp here. So bring it on up. Now, since the curved wall, when you pick on it, if you want to go adjust the profile, notice uh, not an option. So how do we create custom shapes, or whether it's a ceiling, a wall, a piece of furniture, etc., in Revit? Well, they have things called in-place components, and that's what we're actually going to create now. So We'll do a couple of things to set things up. First of all, let's take a look at uh, in-place components. If we go up top here, we'll fire off modeling. Now you can create a door, a wall, etc. If we come down to the bottom, you'll see a thing called create. Now when you fire off create, it's going to throw you into kind of a, a modeling tool, kind of like SketchUp. But one thing you have to do is you have to actually have to give it a category. Is it a wall? Is it a piece of furniture? Is it a ceiling? And this is important because, for instance, windows only go on walls so if you create it uh, as a wall family category you can actually place a window in it if you create it as a ceiling uh, you can easily place lights in it so it's an important part of actually creating your families here so uh, consider that when you actually create it okay so in this scenario we're going to create a wall so I'm going to scroll down and I hit walls now we hit OK now it's going to fire up and it's going to say give it a name I'm going to say wall um, and I'll just put maybe a number behind it. We'll hit 1. It's fine for this scenario, but you can give it a name. At this point, you'll notice that the screen on the left has changed a little bit. Now, in AutoCAD 2010, it looks a little bit different, but the same concepts apply. Uh, it comes up and says, OK, you want to create a custom object. And I'll fire up, let's say, solemn form, a solid form. And you'll notice here we're inside the family. So I hit solid form, and it says solid extrusion. That's a very simple one. A solid blend solid revolve, solid sweep. And then uh, the one that's really slick is a solid sweep blend. Gives you the best of all worlds. Uh, you can start with one shape on one end, have another shape on the other, other end, and actually have it trace a path. That's the one we're going to use. So I'm going to fire this off. Now, when we fire this off, you'll notice that first of all, it's going to come up and ask for a sketch a 2D path. And then once we do this, it'll actually ask us to draw the front end shape and the back end shape. Now currently we don't have any reference planes here or any way to say exactly how to draw that shape or that profile right here. Uh, again we have no reference to actually say how we're going to draw the profile on this back side. So and we don't even know the arch of this wall. So let's take a moment and we'll back up and we'll go through it more systematically. So I'm gonna hit the I'm equipped okay and I'm gonna quit the family. Now we're back where we were. Now I'm going back to, let's say, ground level. When we do ground level, we can come in here and we can start to see certain things, like, for instance, this wall. Now, currently, if we go back to 3D, I'm going to hold the uh, good old 3D house up here. And you'll see that actually currently the wall is hitting the actual uh, ramp. I'm going to create it differently. I'm going to create the wall on the inside here. So we want to know a little bit about this. Now, go back to it. And you see we have uh, this wall. Now we'll do some uh, basic tips just like you do if you're doing it even in AutoCAD. We'll go to Drafting, Dimension, and we're going to come in here and pick a curved dimension. And we select it, and we'll place it. Not that important exactly where we place it, but what it's going to do, it's going to tell us the actual uh, dimension or arc of that wall. Okay, that's working out good. And also notice it actually gives us a start point, or a center point, which works out nice. The next thing we're going to do is actually create two reference planes. Uh, we can actually do it with, without reference planes, but I'll put reference planes in there to make it easier to see. Now, with a reference plane, okay, here under the Basics tab, you'll notice that we have the reference plane. And I'm going to fire this off. Now, when I fire it off, it's going to ask us to draw one or pick one. I could come in here and maybe pick the front surface of there, but I'm not exactly sure. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick two points. I'm going to actually pick the center. I'm going to drag over here and pick here. Now it comes in here and actually creates a reference plane. I'll do it again. Come over here. Okay. 
reference plane from here and to here. Now I've created two reference planes. Now to know and remember what, what they are, I'm going to go to Modify. I'm going to grab this and right click for Options, Element Properties, and we'll call this one, let's say, uh, Bottom, Face. Okay. And notice how it actually shows Bottom Face there. We'll click on this one. We're going to do the same thing. Right click, Element Properties. We'll call this Top Face. We hit OK. So if we're here and we are here. Now we want to make sure we're in the right location to actually draw these. So we'll uh, we'll do a couple little tricks here. Uh, again, we can set these planes up to work and get pretty far where we need them to be. Now, again, in this scenario we may not actually need it for what we're doing, but I want you to show you how you can set up these work planes to actually draw your shapes. Now, at this point we're going to go through, we know the actual arc, and I'm going to take about six inches off of that because I want my wall to be outside. I'm going to first next thing I'm going to do is let's take a look at it. I mean notice the wall does not uh, go up with uh, the ramp. It actually is static and level. So we're going to take it here and delete it. Okay. Now we delete we delete the wall. Now if we go back to ground level, we may or may not see the arc, but there it is. Seventy nine ten. Now we're going to come in here and we're actually going to fire off that tool and we're going to create a custom wall. So let's go through the process now. We're going to go back up top. We're going to go to Modeling. We come down here and you'll actually see Create. Again, we want a wall. So we hit OK on that. And we give it a name, Wall 1. Hit OK. Now at this time, you'll notice that everything else goes gray. And we now have moved into the family creation. Now, you can create in-place families or external families. If you're uh, trying to be efficient about this, most people recommend that you don't create a lot of in-place families. Create them outside and then bring them in. So uh, if you're working on large models, etc., just a little tip there. Now, uh, in this scenario, we need the family. So we're just going to go in here and create it. We're not getting crazy. We're just going to create a couple of them. We're good to go. Go to Solid Form. Now, when we click on this and extrude it out, you'll see, again, we have the Solid Sweep Blend. We're going to fire that up. Now at this time it's going to say sketch 2D path. Now this is the path that it's going to follow. So I'm on ground level, 2D path. And now at this point notice we have the basic drafting tools. Now I can pick an edge if I want, or I can actually come in here and draw it. So we'll use the pick, and you'll see how we can roll over these items and actually pick it. Now just for simple, uh, just to show you another way, we'll actually use the draw. I'll pick three points, and I'll say okay, I'm going to start here. I'm going to end here. I'm going to flex it, and you'll see it snaps to it. We're using the nearest, and we pick here. Now, notice what's happened. See how this, we got this little red dot here with this other stuff going on. It's kind of hard to see here, but uh, if we go to 3D, we should be able to see it. See how we have this plane here and this plane here. Now, it's set it up for us. Now, in some scenarios, you don't get that option, so we create our reference planes. Now, we have those set up, so we're happy. So there's the path, and there is the, the actual planes we'll be working on next. I hit Finish Path. So the path is happy. Now what we need to do is actually draw here. And we're going to draw on this uh, actual temporary work plane. So I come over here and I hit Profile 1. Now, you'll see when I click Profile 1, that one highlights. When it Profile 2, this one goes green. If we zoom over here, you'll see that one highlights. So we're going to start with Profile 1. Now, in essence, we're going to draw a rectangle. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to hit Edit, OK, by Sketch, come down here. Notice we don't want to use the existing ones, so we're going to use Hit Edit. It's going to bring us into our basic drafting again. So this time I'm going to fire off my rectangle. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to use that as a reference point. You notice we can zoom in and see, pick here, and I'm going to drag over and up. Now, at this point, we don't have to be that accurate because we can actually type the numbers in in a moment. So I'm just going to pick here. All right, actually, let's come on the outside here, like so. And I pick like so. Now, it may be hard to see, so I'm going to go down here and change it to hidden. And you can actually, it's a little cleaner to see now. So now, just like we'd be drawing anything else, whether it's a slab or a wall, we're going to go to Modify, select on a piece of it, see how we can actually change the numbers. I'll type in 42. 
inches. Enter. Okay, so it's the right height now. And uh, we may want to bring it down. You may say, well, you know, this is actually sitting on the ground. This is, I want this on the ground. And you can adjust this again the way you need it to be. In this instance, I'll just leave it. Well, let's bring it down. I'm going to grab this here, and I'm going to change it to 3.9 because the little slabs, uh, and it comes down to the end here. So you can see how that looks. Let's check the width. Okay, 6 inches. We're happy. Once you've drawn it and you're happy with that, finish the profile. Okay, so this side is now finished. You'll see we have a reference point, and we have the profile. We have similar to sweeps in that, con uh, uh, that concept when you create sweeps. Now I'm going to spin it around. And here's another little tip. If you pick an object, uh, it may or may not let me do it at this time. You pick the object, and then you use the uh, rotate command. It actually rotates around that object, uses it as a center of, let's say, uh, a center of gravity, or center of location. So see, notice how when I spin around my shift middle mouse button, it's using that as a center of rotation. Just a little tip there to uh, make life easy. Now I'm going to spin on over here. And again, I want to spin around that point. So I highlight it, then I do a spin it. See that spins around that point? Pretty sweet. Okay, now. Uh, we started with 3 inches down, came over, and we need to go 42 inches from here. Now this would be a good time to maybe switch to that plane if we wanted to. Or, if you wanted to get even fancier, you could cut a section here and jump right to that view. But, but we're good to go. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure, if I go out and I look at my elevations, that we can see that we have a 5 foot difference. Here we are, 5 feet. Okay, so that's just a little number we can remember. And we'll go back to our little 3D view. So notice we can get around, but we're still in this sketch mode. So we can jump around, get all crazy, it's all good. Uh, we click on Profile 2, and you'll see it's highlighted in red. Again, we're going to go to Edit. It's going to put us in our sketch mode. Go to Sketch Mode. And again, we'll start here. And I'm going to pull up and over. All right. And there we go. Now, let's say I'm not sure exactly how high I need to be. So I'll just come over here, and I'll place it maybe like so. Now, just like you do slabs, again, these are just purple lines. We can, it's all about the purple line. At this point, I may come over here, pick the edge of the slab, and I may come on up. And I may say I need to make it a certain height. So I'm going to come over here, escape, go to modify. I'm going to pick this object, and I want this to be exactly 3 foot 6 or 42 inches above that object. So there we are. Now, what I'm going to do is I take this, I'm going to delete that, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to delete this, okay, I'm going to delete this, okay. Now we use little tip, uh, trips, uh, excuse me, tips that you've learned probably in basic rabbit training. Clean them up. Sweet, okay. Now, so what we have here is we have our purple line on that side. We have our purple line on this side. And now we're going to say finish the second profile. So now we've created all the components. Okay. Now, the final thing we do is finish sweep blend. Now, it's created, but notice, very, very important part here, we're not finished the family. And here's the cool part. What if you want to change the material? Well, here's when you do it. You do it while you're still in the family. Currently, this is just some generic, I don't know, Play-Doh material. We want it to be, let's say, concrete or brick. Select the object, okay, right-click, Element Properties, and you'll notice down here we have materials. I can come in here and tell it what I want it to be. So we'll say, cast in place concrete. You pick it, whatever you'd like it to be. Maybe for this instance, we'll change it to something, let's say, uh, brick, just so you can see uh, how it actually shows up. We hit OK. Notice we have the brick material. So at this point, we hit finished family, and the object is now created. So let's check it out. We move around, and here's the slick part. It is a wall object. If we click it, okay. Now, if we right click on it now, being that we finished, we hit element properties. You come down here, notice what's hidden. There's no material options. Oh man, you hit edit. Okay. You come in here, notice again, material options. Oh, man. So the trick is, add the materials while you're still creating the family. Uh, you can also go back and edit it. For instance, fire it up now. See, we're still back in the family. Select it, right-click, element properties, material. That's how you go ahead and get to it. Now, at this point, we're going to hit cancel. Finish the family, so we're back where we were. And just to show you that it works like anything else, in Revit because this is a in-place family or, that we've created window. Now we place it in there. Notice I put at least a window on the object. So 
pretty slick stuff, uh, pretty uh, easy to do once you've seen the, the steps involved. You can use all the 3D tools to do it. Uh, and there is the final thing. Let's switch it on back to shading with edges so it's all nice and pretty. And there's our final project.